loving this series that we've been in. Um, what an awesome, have you enjoyed the series? Yeah, it's been good, huh? Man, like, like what, what a great series. And uh, man, we've touched up on some incredible F words through this series. We've talked about fight, right? We've talked about fun. We've talked about family. Man, what, what, some, some very awesome words. But you know what? We're going to talk about an F word this morning that you've all been waiting for. We're going to talk about the real F word this morning. Are you ready for it? Yeah. yeah. Somebody says, yes. Well, guys, lean in and listen, because this morning we're going to talk about forgiveness. Forgiveness. And if you're thinking anything else, shame on you. <laughs> we're talking about forgiveness this morning. You know... Everyone has navigated or struggled with forgiveness. I know it. And I'd wager that at least half of us in this room were dealing with some conflict revolving around forgiveness. I would wager that. And so when we talk about forgiveness, there are a couple elements. There's two elements that, that I'll address. And the first, I'll just run it by you. And the second is the focal point. But the first element of forgiveness is, well, is how we struggle with forgiveness in our willingness to forgive those around us. It's just hard. For some reason, forgiving others is just difficult. But you know, can, can I just say something about it? Because I, I, I get it. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult to forgive, forgive others. But I want to say something on it. I think it takes a lot more effort and is way more exhausting to be upset and frustrated with someone than it is to just forgive, live, and move on. Good. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, but Pastor Mario, you have no idea what that person did to me. Pastor Mario, you don't know the hurt that they put me through. Please don't take it. I feel like you're taking it light what they did to me, Pastor Mario. I can't just forgive, live, and move on. Listen, you're right. I don't know what that person did to you. I don't know how they hurt you. And honestly, even if I did, there's a strong possibility that I may not be able to provide you with the resolution that you're looking for or the resolve. But what I do know is that God's word tells us that above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. If you're holding on to pain, if you're holding on to bitterness, if you're holding on to an unforgiving heart, then that scripture tells us that that pain will flow from us. So you're right. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what struggles you're fighting and, and who you, who, what forgiveness you're battling. But I know that above all, like my Bible tells me above all else, guard your heart. Because what's inside of your heart will flow from you. And I can tell you, I've been in seasons of my own life where it was hard for me to forgive. I've been in seasons of my own life when I've been frustrated or mad at someone. But you know what it did for me? It didn't do a whole lot. If anything, it brought me more stress it brought me more heartache, and, and I, I lost sleep. Now, that doesn't mean that whatever has happened to you doesn't carry value. It does. It does. But what I'm trying to help you understand is don't let it sit on your heart. Don't let it linger in your spirit. Because if it's lingering in your spirit, someone in your world, they're taking heat that was never meant for them. They're being spoken to in a way that they're not meant to be spoken to. All because of bitterness that you may be carrying from another. And you know what? Some of the people that have hurt us really, really bad, they might not even be thinking about it. And that's a heavy truth, but 
that means that the only person that's suffering is you. And that doesn't seem right. That math doesn't add up to me. So I just, I wanna, I wanna give you a thought. And this is for you, not for the person, okay? Not for the person that needs forgiven. This is for you. Who can you forgive today that may be seeking your forgiveness? That doesn't mean things are gonna be like happy-go-lucky and they're back to the way they were. No, 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 no. If someone wronged you pretty bad, then it might not ever be necessarily the same with that person. But to forgive them means that you actually are relieving that heartache from yourself. And I think there's some people in here this morning that are well overdue for some healing. The second element, which is the focal point of this morning's message, is, is that forgiveness... Hmm, is that we just struggle of being able to forgive, forgive ourselves. So there's the, there's the aspect of forgiving others, but then there's the aspect of forgiving ourselves. Like, you know what I mean? To be able to actually forgive yourself for something that you may have done. It's very clear to me that God wants to let somebody know that it's time to let go of the heavy burden your heart has been carrying. And one, you need to know that God, he already forgave you a long time ago. God forgave you a long time ago for whatever that was. And it's just time to forgive yourself. So, people this morning need to know that God's grace, love, and forgiveness is at your door. So some of us need to know that you're never too far away from God's forgiveness. You guys know the story, the parable of Jesus leaving the 99 for the one, right? Well, Jesus, it talks about how even if the one is, is, has wandered off and is on their own, God will always be there to go get that one that wandered away. He'll leave the 99 that are strong and healthy and righteous and thriving in his kingdom just to go make sure that the one comes back home or comes to him. And so someone this morning needs to know that you are never too far away from that forgiveness. When some of us might be thinking to ourselves, well, you know, I'm just disconnected. I'm, I'm just not, I don't know it's, if it's for me. I don't know if I can be forgiven because I haven't been to church in a long time, you know? Or maybe, you know, church isn't my thing. So I have, to, I have to live in my pain. I have to live in my regret. I have to live in my sorrow. I don't, I don't do church. And so I just have to learn how to get by. No. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter how far away from God you are. He will travel across the world to see you come home. Whether you've been there before, whether you, man, I used to go to church when I was in my 20s, I used to serve the house of God and I used to thrive and I used to be so connected and I would, I would just welcome people at the door with a smile and, and I had the opportunity to put a smile on other people's faces. But I walked away from God and, I, and, and it just hasn't been the same. And so I just don't belong in church. No, no. That's not how it works. These doors are always open. God is always welcoming you. And so that is such a tough thing to find yourself in because when you feel disconnected, oh my goodness, when you feel disconnected, it's like you've got no one. But God tells you, you're not too far away from me. I can, I can get to you wherever you are. So if you're sitting here this morning, and that's you, know that God has already forgiven you. He's for you. And he loves you. You're never too far away. And along with that, some of us need to know that it's never too late. 
to receive the forgiveness of God. It's never too late. I love baptisms. Baptisms are, you may have heard me say, they are one of my favorite Sundays. And I just, I was so blessed by incredible pastors who champion such amazing baptisms. And I remember having a conversation with someone and, and they came to me and they said, well, I want to get baptized, but I don't know. I just feel like it's, is it too late? Is it too late for me to get baptized? And I remember thinking to myself, oh my gosh, no, absolutely not. Whether you're in middle school or whether you're in your 70s, in your golden years, it's never too late to take that next step towards Jesus. It's never too late whether it's baptisms, whether it's serving the house of God, whether it's simply accepting him in your life, it is never too late to pursue Jesus. And so that's one of the things I love about baptisms because you, you get to witness. We get to witness. It's good to see the Armstrong family in the house, by the way. Good to see you, baby. Love you. But we get to witness those steps towards Jesus. What a privilege that is. That feeling, that atmosphere that's created in this house, it's a heavenly atmosphere. Some of you came in today just thinking, well, you know, I've got a family member or a friend getting baptized. So, you know, I'm, uh, yeah, sure, I, I'm gonna come support them and check it out. But that feeling that even you received in, in his presence, that's the presence of God. And that, that's the glory and the riches of seeing how, how God can move in the spirit. You may have walked in here thinking, I'm just coming to support a friend, when in reality, you actually came to st- take steps closer to Jesus as well. Yes. well Pastor Mario, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know. Like, you just, you just don't know. I just, I've lost so much time. Mm-mm. No, no, no. You haven't really lost any time, to be honest, because your journey is yours alone. Your time's gonna look different than your, your parents' time or your kids' time, your sister's time, brother's time. Your journey is yours alone. Now you have a congregation and God to walk alongside of you, but you have to take your own steps. And so for those of you in the room right now who may be thinking, well, it's too late for, for God to forgive me, It's too late for for, for me to be able to actually bask in forgiveness. Please don't be manipulated by the enemy because God's timing is perfect and you're right on time. So we talk about how you're never too far away. We talk about how it's never too late. And this I love. God invites you as you are God invites you as you are. I want to tell you a story about when uh, Jesus called his first disciples and just read from scripture. And in Matthew 4, 18 through 20, it says this, while walking by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Jesus, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting net into the sea. For they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately, everyone say immediately. Immediately. They left their nets and followed him. Jesus told his followers to come as you are. You see, they didn't have to go. He didn't say, hey, go and repent. Go and right your wrongs. He didn't give, he, he didn't say that. He said, come as you are. You see, there isn't a criteria or a packing list or a dress code. You just have to believe and trust in Jesus. As simple as reacting to it. Some of us, we need to get our reaction skills back up to par. Some of us, we, we, we walk into a situation and, and it's hard and it's heavy and we freeze up. When, when, when the truth is, is we just need to get work those exercises to be able to respond to when we hear the, 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 the voice of Jesus or the call of Jesus or respond to whenever Jesus says, hey, Isaac, it's okay. 
It's all right. We just need to be able to respond to him. So hear me here. If God sees you fit for forgiveness, if he opens his arms to you, regardless of your letdowns and your setbacks, then allow yourself to walk in the freedom of forgiveness. Allow yourself to walk in that freedom. And the team can come out. I want to go through those again. You're never too far away from the forgiveness of God. It's never too late for the forgiveness of God. And God invites you as you are. I want to tell you guys a story. A story that spoke volumes to my spirit. A story that I almost feel like you'd find in the movies. Some time ago, we received a prayer request from a young lady by the name of Jamie. And her father was in the, in the hospital and, and they'd come to terms that his time was coming and that, that he was going to pass. This gentleman's name was Dan Dickey. And I remember hmm, remember having I remember going to the hospital room and having a conversation with Dan and his lovely wife and Jamie. But prior to that, I got to meet Jamie, the, the, the son, and their lovely mother the Sunday prior. And I heard the most amazing story. And Jamie's mom hadn't stepped foot in a church in 30 years, nor had Dan himself. And I, and I remember hearing how they came into this room in a time of difficulty. And I remember hearing that Dan's lovely wife was brought to tears, crying in the back of the room. She felt God moving in her spirit. And there was a song that was playing, the bridge to hear again, and it goes, not for a minute, was I forsaken? The Lord is in this place. Come Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. So we talked, fast forward back to me in the hospital room with Dan and the girls. And just meeting Dan, there was a spirit over him. He's a funny, funny guy. But he, he, he wasn't able to come to church because of his health, because his time was coming. And I remember the Holy Spirit saying to me, because I know what that meant to his wife, that moment in that song. And so I was like, okay, well, hey, we're gonna worship in the hospital room if that's all right. Mind you, you can worship anywhere. And I remember, um, I remember having the conversation, talking, and then I said, hey, we're gonna worship a little bit. And, and I remember singing, not for a minute was I forsaken and like no instruments, no music. And the moment that I sang, not for a minute was I forsaken. Just those words, he started to sob, started to cry. And he felt the spirit of God in that room. It was beautiful. We talked a little bit more. We prayed over Dan and over the family. And 
now just a few weeks ago, the family said their goodbyes to the patriarch of the family and Dan went to be in heaven. That's right. Dan went to heaven. You see, they hadn't been in church in 30 years because of something that may have happened back then. Who knows what the case may have been, but something prevented them from going to church. But can I tell you that it's never, you're never too far away from God? Can I tell you it's never too late to repent? It's never too late to go back to Him. And no matter what you've been through, He's always going to receive you as you are. So I know that Dan is in heaven right now watching over this service. I know he's in heaven right now watching over his family, loving on them and sitting right there with Jesus. That moved me. Can we all stand this morning? That story with Dan Dickey inspired me to know that no matter what happens in your life, whatever journey you're on, whatever path you take, so long as you find your way back to Jesus, you are saved. So long as you accept him into your heart and choose him as your savior, you are vindicated, you are redeemed. And so I know that there are people in this room right now that feel forsaken. I know that there are people in this room right now who feel unworthy, who feel like their mistakes are too big, who feel like the pain that they carry right now cannot leave their spirit. But can I tell you, it doesn't matter how far you've gone. It doesn't matter what time it is. Come as you are. And God will move in a special way.